to uh, the point where you're at the second cap. So we'll, we'll yeah. see. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a really good point there of that sunken cost fallacy on characters like Doomfist that are incredibly sink or swim. We see the same thing with Sombras very often. Oh, I'll get my ult, it'll be fine. I'll get my ult, it'll be fine. And in reality, that ultimate rarely makes the big difference at the end of the day. All right, five seconds away from this one. It's Orisa and Doom. Yeah, this is going to be close to look into. All right, yeah, we'll see in this first bout with a who takes control early, and we'll see if that ends up like garnering a swap from either side of this one. First contact going to come, of course, on the bridge. First punch, oh! nothing there. The solo HP Heiko. and no one there to help. That's a fantastic wall to break up that Doomfish. Yep. Heiko caught out with no help. The rest of his and team now getting punched away. There's a sup gone. Brig gone as well. Everybody down to the back The line. fight's and over. The fight's just over. Just like well, that, it it's time begin. to swap. Yep, you lose your tank. You cannot do much else. The three players from Ball State that I do recognize that I have seen before, Spencer, Yakester, and Raven Strider, are all incredibly talented. Spencer, one of the best collegiate Mays possibly that I've had the opportunity to see, plays May almost all the time. And it's those walls, Kat. You yeah, nailed that. So it convenient. is that wall that Spencer always makes the difference with. And with characters that are so feast or famine like Doomfist, the second you isolate them into a 5v1, even with the mobility and survivability that Doomfist can bring to the table, we're not going to be seeing him work with it as well, especially when May starts to to freeze him and slow him down. But as it looks like that Orisa is going to be taken off the map by Tycho, J Diesel Ooh. gets traded out. Vexa has to shield bash up and in, but Raven Strider found a pick of their own. Arcane is going to be eliminated. If Tycho stays up, this is winnable for the side of Western Michigan. But unfortunately, Raven Strider going down should be the beginning of the end. Every second that passes is another second in favor of Ball State here. It's all about that stall potential. Absolutely. They got the Arisa back into the fight. They've taken it out. That with the bat, but no one able to make space there for Western Michigan. They're still going to get pushed back. It's slowly getting picked off. Two players left in this back line and yet again pushed away. So not just the stall set, it's a full-on hold of this point. Yeah, it's incredible that we saw uh, the side of Western Michigan lose that percentile there. I thought they really had the numbers. I think it was 3v2 at a point. Their tank was still alive. Their Ana was still up. So it felt like a winnable scenario. But instead, they chose to pull their punches. They reeled it in just a little bit. And it cost them, especially because we're seeing Ball State over 60% already with plenty of ultimates in that arsenal. I think they're going to be notably more effective than Western Michigan's as well. And we're going to see if Ghost can make that difference. Overclock now online. Looks for a strike. Not able to find it. Tycho goes for the map punch, but will have to re-engage on the fight later. A wall from Spencer interrupts their own mm. uh, amplification matrix, and Ghost is going to be the first one to bite that golden bullet. Greamy caught out in a line. Raven Strider perfectly traded, and Western Michigan has the numbers. They need to keep pushing. It's Lucio going to look for some stall here. Just not enough time. Yakes are taken down. Tycho able to find both subs decently early into that fight. Got space for the team. Finally, point flip for Western Michigan. Now time to start accruing on their own. Ults in their pocket. Same story, though, for Ball State. Might hit them on the way in. It's going to be this potential here, this opportunity to strike is what we're looking for. And these ultimates in pocket, I mean, Spencer's got the Blizzard. You're 16% away from a perfect run here on Li Zhang Tower Gardens. You just pop that Blizzard. There's a Genji to deflect it, so you want to throw it slowly to the ground. Overclock on the opposing side. Jay Diesel's out. The beat is down. The wall is up, and the team has to re-engage. Beat out from Vexa. Overclock from Jay Diesel, and still nobody has fallen quite yet. All 10 players still standing. Immortality Field is gone, but Vexa is definitely not long for this world. They barely make it out of the Blizzard, certainly with a little bit of Frostbite in their pocket. The uh, Blade from Arcane is going to be valuable enough. It finds two, turns into a third, and all of a sudden it looks like western michigan is really starting to dig these stakes deep into lijang gardens the combo there for greamy and arcane is fantastic uh, the nano coming in for that blade in addition a, a fantastic uh, hit with the nade there it's a guarantee there's no healing for the two dps sitting on the point makes that very easy to blade and find those frags just like that western michigan have killed a little more time They've got a little more space one more fight and they could see themselves taking point number one yeah, point one could be in favor of Western Michigan. They started slow, but they've really been able to turn things around. A huge bionade from Greamy finds three players on Ball State that's going to force them to fall back a bit to stall. They used every ultimate they had in that last fight, Cap, and it was a lost endeavor. They're going to have to get something if they want to pull it off, if they want to be that top hero. But now, right now, they need all the might they can find to walk away with this victory. Nano back online already for Greamy. Going to hit it on to the fist here. Strike in the pocket of Tycho. Doesn't need it just yet. Arcane going to find the first. James is going to pick up one as well. The DPS having value early into this fight for Western Michigan. Tycho now coming deep. A lot of contact. Caught in this three-man triangle. Is able to avoid it. JD's Diesel, another one in the back line. Yanks are going to find one. It's the Lucio to get credit to the frag. On to the Doom. A lot of space here picked up for Ball State. Still players alive. Got to worry about spawning. This Vex is trying to hold on for some time. 
Oh! Spencer caught up by Arcane deep with a dash into the back line. That's gonna be a huge player falling over halfway to that blizzard. Over Overclock has to come out from Ghost in the back line. Oh. If they can dismiss Diesel, they can be down only by one, but currently it's two, and I think a third is just on the horizon. You can't see 12 HP goes down early on, 99% in favor of Western Michigan. The players eliminated, Ball State obliterated, and by the skin of their teeth, Western Michigan will emerge victorious 100 to 84% on that first point. What a turn from Western Michigan. A very clear fight win for Ball State early. A second win for them, getting them to that 60%. And you think Western Michigan, maybe the Consulat has to come out, not finding much value. They were under in ultimates in their third fight. It was three and two. Ball State yep. with the advantage of that one. Still though, Western Michigan able to hold out, able to find a flip. Uh, and then they're able to kill all that time and keep winning those fights to take themselves to the win. It's fascinating, too, because you see the Doomfist go out. What was the first thing I said about this broadcast? Oh, Doomfist is really going to struggle against the Orisa. But on the side of Western Michigan, Grimi on the Ana was hitting incredible bio nades time and time again. The Orisa couldn't use her utility to survive a fight. And right now, they swap off the Ana, which I think was a possible win condition for them. So I want to look closely at Grimi as this game continues to unravel to see if we're going to be getting a swap back to that Ana. Jay Diesel down. Ball State wins this first fight. We can't get excited about it yet because they won first fight back on Garden. So we saw how that played Yeah. Out. Yeah, very true. Can't call it early. That wall almost able to stagger players. At the very least, keeps damage off of Ball State and gives them, of course, all this space as well. Point momentarily going to unlock. It's, of course, going to be claimed by Ball State. Uh, we'll see Western Michigan if they're able to get back in just as they did a game ago. 1% and counting for Ball State. They did a really good job stalling out. But we have to remember, in reality, they really only won a single fight. They won one. They were able to stall up to, what was it, 61%, I believe. And then after they truly lost a fight, they were never able to regain that caliber. Yep. I think this map is a little more friendly to their team composition. May and Lucio really get to thrive in those close quarters Ooh. corridors. And a boot from Vexa isn't going to find the elimination, but a boot from Tycho certainly will. The double tap is effective. It takes Raven Strider out of the equation. Another punch deep into the back line. Find Spencer. Another one on to Ghost. That's three environmental kills in a row for Western Michigan. Vexa finding a fourth kill here in Yankster. The team kill is barely going to be able to make it out. Arkin, maybe a bit overzealous the wall. on that elimination. Okay. Hey, this is the wall. I will say, though, I think their team took a lot more eliminations than yeah. him killing himself. So, uh, no worries, truly. Western Michigan going to grab the point much quicker in percentage this time, a whole 30% faster. As you mentioned, that stall does not come through this time around. Ball State looking to go deep into mid here on their retake. Approaching in through this midpoint, I think it's going to be really beneficial for Ball State. We saw them lose the environmental kill challenge yeah. pretty aggressively, so I think they want to try to minimize that option as fast as possible. Amplification Matrix out, Tycho doing one of the smartest things we rarely see teams do, and that's just getting out of the way of that Amplification Matrix. Uses that barrier for protection, but unfortunately can't protect his supports. He goes up in that Meteor Strike, and what goes up must come down. No eliminations yet, thanks to a great immortality field from Raven Strider. 16% off an overclock, a lot of ultimates in favor of Ball State. With a late stagger onto that Genji, that buys them a lot of additional time. Especially, oh, if that Lucio were to go down. And in the time that Tycho gets to the back line, everyone is dead on point. All three yep. gone. It's TDP as in a sup, and just like that, that's about all she wrote on the fight. Would have loved to see uh, Tycho try to get behind that Matrix and push players in front of it. Just so much extra damage that they're grabbing there with the old spin. It had immense value for Ball State, who now get the hold. This hold is going to be pretty valuable with the Katsune rush out from Grimi, a blade in the back line from Arcane already. Raven Strider has gone down, Immortality Field had not come back from the cooldown, and with a double elimination in favor of a Ball State, we're looking at a clean matchup across the field here. A beautiful deep flex from Arcane allows Tycho to get into the mix, stay alive through the Blizzard, and now find a double elimination. That's a lot of value gained from Ball State, but how valuable is it really when you use three ultimates and still lost a fight? Absolutely. Now just that beat left. You say the same story for Western Michigan, who are going to have the overclock on top of it. I thought it would come out for Jay Diesel there, getting out of Archway, but didn't need to. And still, they confidently win that fight. It's a lot of value for Western Michigan here coming back into this one. Definitely the ult advantage, almost a meteor up for them as well. We'll see what they can push in. Coming back forward here, Tycho's going to have some damage on the side. He's trying to force these players away. Look for these environmentals, and it's just value after value. The overclock oh. comes out. JD's going to pick up two big shots. Arcane and Tycho sweep the rest of the floor. Western Michigan looking to take game one.
Now, the biggest difference I'm seeing right now is Western Michigan's uh, ability to control their ultimates and only use them when they need them versus yep. Ball State, who's pretty overzealous with these ultimates. They go in pretty aggressively. They use all their ults and they get super aggressive. Everything they've gotten in the next fight, there are none in the mountains of Tibet. They're completely lost. They've got no idea what yep. they're doing. They have no clue where they are and they just have to walk away with those no ultimates. They have to give a fight up. And as I said earlier, after they lose that first fight, we've yet to see them win another one. They won a big fight with this Matrix when the last time they flipped this point was. So let's see if they can do so again. They've got a lot of damage early. Yeah, I was going to find one, but Jay Diesel doesn't even need the overclock. Just with that full charge rifle, able to get back with another. I was trying to help the teammates, trying to push players to the sidewall. Has done a good job thus far, but now they're fighting on that exterior. You know what happens when they get out there. Jay Diesel going to find another one. Greamy has value. Uh, and just like that, it's a fight flip yet again for Western Michigan. Spencer will do what they can on the tracer. Just lost the Orissa, and that's about all she wrote on this one. That's going to be all she wrote in this matchup. Indeed, Cat Western Michigan will emerge victorious on Li Zhang Tower. We saw some signs of life from Ball State. They're making a couple of panic swaps here at the end, but I think this is out of desperation more than anything. The stall's available. Spencer has 49 HP and still can't get out of the fight fast enough. Arcane into Yakester. You lost your Lucio, and I think you've truly lost the fight now. Yeah, one turns to three like dominoes. Ball State begins to fall, and now that will be Western Michigan emerging victorious on map number one, Li Zhang Tower. From a lost fight number one to a confident game number two, Western Michigan quickly uh, switching the value. And it's quite nice for this team. You know, didn't even need the counter pick to do it. Yep. Uh, just needed players like Arcane and a good, clean fighting style. Yeah, and I think it's really fascinating. It's actually statistically quite an anomaly where we see a team lose first fight on both control points and actually still emerge victorious because if a team can cap first point and get, I think it's over 20%, they have a 60% chance of winning the map. And that's something that we've seen consistently across all levels of Overwatch. Yep. But somehow the anomaly is through in the form of Western Michigan. They emerge victorious in a really impressive way. They did not just show up, but they really did start to show off quite a bit there toward the end. And I'm eager to see if that carries on to our next map type which will be escort but Kathy, the interesting part about this is this is not a predetermined map anymore the type right. is guaranteed but the map can be chosen by our winning or by our losing team ball state yep which uh love the difference um uh, i don't you know despise the uh, the predetermined map i think it's convenient for not having to figure out like coin flip and things like that mm -hmm. uh, i also think it's good for teams to prepare what exactly are we going into yeah sure like it definitely makes it interesting to see like what the work you yeah. did prior is that the vod review not having to put in the guesswork of what map it's going to be especially with so many maps in the pool now um but yeah we'll, we'll see where this team wants to go um i do think compositionally uh it doesn't really matter where they play i don't know if you have an uh, opinion on that it, I, I think we're going to be seeing different tanks, at least on the side of Ball State. When you're looking at something like Escort, when you've constantly got a payload that is moving from underneath you and moving with your team, you need a tank that can defend the cart and be somewhere else at the same time. So mm -hmm. someone like Sigma that can leave his shield behind, or someone like Ramatra that has really good range and distance. The problem with Doomfist is he's really effective where he is, but he's always in one spot. Versus some sure. other tanks that can kind of work or move very quickly. Diva's boosters, Winston's leap. They can get back and forth very fast. But Doomfist, as mobile as he is, those abilities still need to be utilized for damage as often as they can. So unless you lock your tank onto the cart or push him way up with his supports behind him, Doom can just struggle a little bit on a map where the escort point or where the payload is that mandatory focus. Sure, sure. I think that's, that's very fair. With that said, uh, any maps in particular uh, you'd like to see this team go, if they did keep the doom fist out we don't really have a a lot of match history for these teams so we don't really know what tank they play yeah. other than the doom fist so if they were to keep it uh where would you like to see that doom fist at I think if we're running Doomfist here, now you've just got to hope at this point, right? Because Doom's on the winning side. So you've got to assume mm -hmm. they're going to be picking a map that's pretty anti Doomfist. But if they sure. aren't, if they're not thinking that far ahead, Dorado, I think, is your best pick. I don't think Doom is the best tank on any of these. I think I just kind of uh, exuberated yeah. that point a minute ago. I think D.Va and Winston are definitely the tanks I'm looking for. Ramatra and Sigma, all four of those above Doomfist. But I think he works really well on a map like Dorado, where you can utilize a lot of uh, forced high grounds the game allows the defending team to have, versus something like Shambali or Route 66, where there are high grounds, but they're often blocked by, you know, little barriers or, oh, a little wooden sign, places mm. that Doomfist can't really dance on the high ground for very long. Sure. I think, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's sure. gonna be my that's gonna be my analysis for now. But we might circle back to it. Yeah, I, I took the time to go back through this roster sheet just to make sure they didn't have like a secondary tank who maybe does play a more of that shield. They do not. Both um, teams but hey, tank listed. 
I mean, even just like in your rank game, you're you're definitely playing different things. Especially if you're a Doom main, I feel like any sign of losing in ranked is instantly, please get off the Doomfist, bro. Yeah, like, why, are you, doom. why are you please playing Doom, bro? Come yeah. on, like I got to report you. So uh, uh -huh. definitely the chance that they do have a secondary tank in the bag, and, and we'll see if that's the case, especially as you mentioned, them not having a pick of the litter here map-wise. Um, and, and while we still have a couple seconds, I want to give some love to the Genji of Arcane. I feel like so much value coming out, especially that blade, which you kind of got to give credit then as well to Greeny Diana for setting up the nano. Yeah. I think we got, we got two big nano blades there uh, throughout that game. But a lot of value from Arcane, a big deflex to help keep the tank alive, and some pretty crucial moments early in those fights. I feel like uh, towards the back end of round two, we get two fights on high percentage that that team doesn't necessarily yeah. win uh, without Arcane stepping in. And I think there was a really cool moment that I highlighted on Night Market, which is currently Day Market, whatever. It's Night Market. But uh, where we saw uh, Tycho get frozen by the May Blizzard. And yeah. up from the point, we saw Arcane dash in and start deflecting in front of the tank. Something that a lot of people didn't anticipate to see. But it was that deflect that kept Tycho alive. Tycho then immediately gets unfrozen, drops two, flips the point in favor of Western Michigan. So I think the second point cap for WMU really did come off the back of Arcane. I think you're spot on. This tank came in, came in loud, got a lot of... Not tank this uh, genji came in uh -huh. got really aggressive found a great performance early on and played a character that a lot of people are pretty harsh against especially sure. when you're looking at spencer on the may running a genji can be really really difficult but somehow arcane was great at target focus never went after the may unless she was the last one standing and made it difficult oh thank the heavens above i'm in love with this map he's back all right not super shocked to see king's row i feel like this is a, another Collegiate Classic. Like, if they could have picked yeah, the control, 100%. we probably would have got Legion Tower. Uh, if we could pick the Escort, which we obviously can, uh, we'll probably go to Night Market. And that's, or excuse me, we'll probably go to King's Row. That's exactly what has happened. Um, Tycho still on this Doomfist, uh, on the attack, should have some value here, at least for the first point, just getting in uh, and getting them to that payload. And I mean, they obviously work for them on control, which they've got to take the control point to that. start the Escort. So, yep. I like it. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop. Me. God, that's so me. What a vibe. Right now, the Reinhardt coming out here on the defense is going to be a bit... It's scary, I think, because Reinhardt can get rolled over pretty aggressively by a Doom Fist. But if um, this Reinhardt is able to counter their charges appropriately, they can stun the Doom. The team can really collapse on top of them and force a pretty valuable performance overall. I'm keeping a look towards Spencer on the Tracer as well. She's one of the worst characters in the game right now. After a couple of, might I say, pretty unfair nerfs. And I think being on the May is where Spencer's comfortable. I'd like to see them rotate back to that if given the time. We're looking at Sojourn versus Sojourn, and as this fight draws out, Jay Diesel has somehow snuck Too all the much way into space. the back line, but it's Greamy who's going to be that first blood instead. Yeah, a lot of space game for Jay Diesel. You see the spam start to come through. I was kind of hoping that this boss state defense would turn around and get some space for his teammate, but that obviously was not the case at all. They held the front line with no trouble, uh, are able to clear out the back line with no issue, uh, and a reset yet again. It's about a minute off the clock. minute off the clock so 25 percent of your time has come and gone western michigan being healed up slowly but surely having to painstakingly draw out these seconds is going to make it really difficult to work with but when you've also got three minutes your spawn is right there wow five hp goes barely on their heels alive and this is going to be a quick dive into the back line here western michigan wants to move forward looking for the opportunity to strike farm up these ultimates asap and greamy is still on that ana i'm looking for a nano blade but if greamy can't play the game when is she going to get that nano for the blade yeah. ghost has been traded but if you lose both of your supports that one trade just isn't going to be worthwhile oh Oof. what a pin beautiful the second big pin on a dps player from jay bobbers and that's going to be about another minute gone is this team going to reset yet again almost down to just half this time you mentioned that nano still has to come through almost every ult online for ball state here will be momentarily this is going to be a very difficult fight here for Western Michigan. See if Ball State can save enough ultimates to win the next two fights as well. Looking for these ultimates is going to be beneficial. I was pretty critical on Ball State on how they all pop their ults at once. That is a beautiful nice. stick from Spencer. Takes Vexa out of the equation here, prevents the opportunity to farm anything like that rally online. So they lose both supports again. That is a fight guaranteed lost. And with two ultimates used, that's and it's probably that's the good. comfortable number that yeah. we're going to be seeing here is those two ultimates. You don't want to use any more than that in a single fight. That's pretty decent. They still got the Shatter. They still got the Overclock. They have a Beat as well for what will be this next push. And I like the fact the Beat's still here in addition. It's now is the time where Western Michigan are finally going to have their ults online. Uh, so Ball State 
have that have that beat to really fight against what is going to be this heavier push. Sorry, I'm editing my spreadsheet. I'm not afraid to admit that. Give me just a second here. Here we go. Back into this fight. Four ultimates available for the side of Western Michigan. And now 5v4. Okay. So how many ultimates do they really have to use? Up for the blade. The nano not found. Comes in a moment late. So the beat from Yakester has plenty of time to be available. Vexa gone. Raven Strider gone. And just like that, it's going to be a 4v3 in favor of Ball State. Raven Strider was taken down. But Arcane's blade is actually a silent one. Just like Arcane Season 2, we're not going to be seeing anything related to that blade. So now Ghost is going to find a shot onto Diesel, giving their life for it. And while I do think Western Michigan is going to squeak out this fight win, I do think there's a really large opportunity for Ball State to stall. And that's the name of the game right now. If you're losing the fight, you want to burn as many seconds as possible because when they cap, they get two and a half additional minutes. They're already down to 30 seconds, so you're not feeling horrible about the time on the clock, but you want to make sure you burn every possible second. Hey, good timing for Spencer to re-step here. Sound the health back for long enough. Got yeah, this his is tank big. back in the fight and is now into the action very early. Uh, that's going to cause some space. Timing out the clock. If they grab this, it's going to be almost an overtime. Pulls back online for Spencer. It'll be oh, he missed. now. Yeah, not finding any target here. Maybe better luck with the overclock. We we'll see if you can't see. Can make it happen. And he looks like he's blind through that old kick. Find anything. Still a fight on point for Western Michigan. Have to take down the Lucio. Nice. They've done just that. And finally, going to cap 30 on the clock. And they've got the car moving. Yeah, so just shy of overtime there. They had two seconds left on the clock when they were able to break through and cap that point. So they only have two and a half minutes. I don't even know if, even if they weren't stopped the entire time, I don't think they could get any further without more than a minute on the clock. I think a minute capping second point is maximum time back. And that's assuming that Western Michigan didn't stop them or get in the way at all. I think we're going to be looking toward Ball State to get aggressive here. They don't have a lot of ults to work with, so they want to farm them this fight. They're assuming that uh, there's going to be an overclock and a rally online. So Western Michigan probably going to be popping that rally here just like that. That's going to give them an opportunity to strike further into the fight. If they can take down the Reinhardt, this fight is already over. Immortality field gone. The Reinhardt critical condition, but Arcane just cannot overextend far enough. Has to peel back but ball state has to do the same you see j bobbers realizes gotta get away from that one lose his front line all the way back and we'll get some space there he's that shield the charge jay diesel gets caught early though fire strike enough to kind of take him down there and that's going to give a massive advantage here early into this fight arcane gone as well taiko does get one back and now it's just kind of an awkward series of 1v1s here almost looks like a game of death matches they run through but uh nonetheless ball state Going to fight this one all the way backwards. Oh, beautiful performance from Ball State. They're going uh, straight into the spawn door. They know that Western Michigan pushed it far enough. They got to what I love to call King's Row point one and a half. They got it far enough that they're able to really have to respawn. Every respawn costs 10 seconds plus the travel time back to point. They only had two and a half minutes and were already down to 60 seconds. The Nano Blade coming in this fight from Western Michigan is the ultimate to be looking out for. But Yakester has that beat and that is one of the easiest counters in the game to Nano Blade. We're still being set here. It's going to give time for what should be these other two olds for Ball State to pop online before the actual fight comes through. Let's run high ground. Bit of chip damage. How much spotted early? Two going to go to hide as well for Western Michigan. See if they can get something here worked on the flank as Tycho finally going to look to force the issue. 20 left standing on this clock. They've got to reach all the way through this point. They want more time. This is going to be a tough one. We've got the Nano, but oh, you get pulsed out of oblivion. My goodness, Greenby goes down. They're not going to be back in time to pop this. So now we need a Nanoless Blade. JD's will cop on the Shatter. A great pin into the back oh. line. Disrupts the Genji, but the Deflect will stop the Hammer. As much as I think it shouldn't, for some reason it does. Arcane goes down to go. Spencer found Vexa, and this is going to be stalled out here. Overclock in the pocket. Just trying to rock it here in this King's Row point. One and a half with a cart has been stalled as it so often is and now the win condition has been set for ball state can they guarantee us at least a map number four you gotta wonder at what point do you get a shield in front of your team especially looking at like playing a card i feel like they just can't get through that point because like players like you can't see you can just sit there spam so right. much damage down there's nothing you can do to stop it there is not a lot you can do to stop it. You've got so much damage moving out, but I think if you are going to be working with damage, you go for something like a shield. This is kind of the problem of Doomfist I talked about, right? Is He is good, 
but he's not necessarily good at protecting the rest of his team, which makes it really easy for somebody like Spencer to double blink into the back line. Oh, Vexa, hold this for me. It's a bomb. And it, it works so <laughs> difficult to play in that position. So uh -huh. I'm wondering if Ball State is going to continue abusing that because right now we're starting to see the downside of being a Doomfist specialist. Doom can only mm -hmm. do so much, especially in fights that are a little more team coordinated. Control is very deathmatchy. It's very flowy. It's very chaotic. But game modes like hybrid are very calculated. They're very formulaic. And when when that tank isn't there to protect the team, it can be incredibly detrimental. After the trigger pull lies a blissful eternity. Yeah, I think as we switch game modes again, things will get easier, most definitely. But uh, look at that escort. I mean, even on the cap, it, it took a decent amount of time uh, to grab that point. We got it with two seconds left on the clock. So I, I can't even say necessarily the control point it is that much easier. Uh, for this player and now they're going to play them back on the defense as well so we'll see they've got shenanigans uh, up uh, in their pocket as it's going to be a shield that can almost just walk straight towards this uh -huh. point uh -huh. I, did, I was hesitant about doom on the attack i i do not like him on the defense i think this is a very scary thing for this team to be doing uh, western michigan has made no changes to their team composition here in this attack and defense they're bringing out the exact same roster and actually as i say that um, so is Ball State, if you include the Tracer from Spencer, who we saw at the beginning. Nobody's making changes, and if you are Ball State, I agree with them. I think you won it pretty easily, things were feeling confident, and it looks like it worked out well. Now, what I don't like from Ball State is the rotation they made. I love what you said, Cat. You've got a shield that can walk right towards them. And they did it. They went all the way up. They went all the way around. It was yeah. this big flashy play. And it burned an entire minute off the clock. I think Western Michigan has so little, like, chip damage that breaking through the shield is going to be tough enough that yep. ball state should be able to free claim some free space if they just hold w yeah i think so too i will say if the play had worked you would have been like wow this is a right. great play right not they, stupid they snuck it, works, it. Right? that was so awesome yeah so yeah uh, i don't mind them going for it obviously uh the readjustments already come through they're just gonna put uh, the run straight through into this back line. actually Running the gauntlet again, so never mind. I I'm gonna eat my words here. Uh, but this one looks this one looks a little more consistent. They have no idea that they're in the back line right now. Yeah, Spencer Spencer's pulling attention to the front line here. It's kind of a Valorant play. Spencer's like, I'll make noise up here. You yeah. guys flank around. You kind of pull focus somewhere else. And it's something that we don't see particularly often. They're going for, what is this? I, I think it was the Houston Outlaws or maybe the LA Gladiators that did something like this that really kind of popularized this formula. But look, there's the problem. Yakester fell down a little bit too early, wasn't able to recover. And now nobody's there to peel for Raven Strider, who's on critical uh, HP. They will go down. There's another fight won. It looked really good for Ball State on the defense, but this offense is... Uh, it's, it's leaving something to be desired. Now with no support, they can win this. it has the numbers advantage, but now you've got to go in. Every lick of damage you're taking is permanent right now. The yeah, recontest the is least, inevitable. They way faster. That's true. That's true. So, Lucio's already back. Still a lot of potential. Like they, they kill, When they took down Tycho the tank, I feel like there's massive potential for this one. There clearly has been. They've got space. They've got two-thirds of this capture all the way down, and now their subs are back as Tycho's getting back. So an arc advantage into this fight as it currently sits need to hold players away and need to make sure no one's tapping this point of Western Michigan, which no one's been able to do thus far. Tycho finally going to jump in, but he's jumping into tons of damage. Pin doesn't quite come through. Doom gets to the back. Bionade on its way, and just like that, it's time to escort him with a lot more time than Western Michigan had. Yeah, I mean, nearly two minutes more than, or maybe 90 seconds more than Western Michigan had. Greamy has been eliminated a little bit late. The guarantee there is that Greamy has to go all the way to the back spawn, and Ana is one of the slowest characters in the game, one of few with absolutely no mobility. So it's going to take her a little while to get there, but that's okay, because Western Michigan is going to be playing this a little slow anyway. They've got all five ultimates on the side of WMU here, three available for Ball State. If you're Ball State, you don't ult this upcoming fight. You just let them use as many as they want, and you win the next one but a lot of times we don't see teams thinking that far ahead they're thinking in the moment which you can't really blame them for when things get so neck and neck here sure. every ult online in western michigan all right blade out and blade gone you can't oh. see it's a massive headshot there doesn't need the overclock to do it Spencer are gonna get value and a lot of value off of this shatter. Tycho incredibly low. Looking to get hit in the back line by this Ana, who's done just that. Tycho to pick up two off the punch. Greedy goes down. Feel the tank cooking. But cooking against a whole lot of uh -oh. ingredients here. And this pot's boiled over. He's down. Spencer will take it. And they're pushing straight to this point. 
Yeah, I think this is over. And I want to give credit to Spencer. That Shatter hit nobody. It made a little bit of space, but it was Spencer that dropped a 3K in the mix there. Dropped the Pulse Bomb, found three, and really created the space for Ball State to walk away with that map victory. Now it is day. It's week one, so let me pull up my notes very quickly. The next map type, I believe, will be Hybrid as map number three, which is pretty similar. Not Hybrid, excuse me. Uh, is uh, Escort, I believe. So I think it is going to be the next one. And looking into the future, it could be really anything these players want it to be. But they can only pick from so many maps. I believe 17 maps are available in total here. And I'm anticipating if we are going to uh, escort. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't even I don't even know. Because these team comps are weird. They're unconventional. They're odd. <laughs> but luckily enough, we've got enough time to think about it because we're going to a break. I'm going to try to figure out what the heck is going on with this Doomfist exclusive pick. You guys don't go far. We're back with more esports collegiate overwatch in just a bit.
Oh my goodness. I'm frozen again and I noticed just in time. Hold on, everybody. I'm back. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Esports Collegiate. Overwatch week number one. Ball State versus Western Michigan starts off strong in favor of WMU and then wraps up in favor of Ball State in map number two. So now we are jumping to Flashpoint. I'm Seth Lins, joined by Catinator and Cat. Flashpoint is definitely one of the map types in the game of Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, having to worry about all of these capture points at once. Uh, how do you split the team? What's the most productive route uh, to travel as a, a unit uh, or not as a unit, as you could say, as well? And Septons, I got to say, I think this is a great map pick for uh, uh, an agent that we or a hero, excuse me, that we've been talking about quite a bit throughout this broadcast. I couldn't agree more, Kat. I think there's actually a couple of people here that I'd like to see, but with the way these teams aren't swapping heroes, I'm not sure we're going to be seeing anybody new. So, New Junk City is definitely going to be fascinating. Point number one will open up, and then whatever point comes up next is fully random, according to the game. And yeah, no, yep, nothing. Nothing really that different. We see Spencer on Symmetra, Whoa, but all he's going to do is teleport out of spawn and then swap to Tracer. Tracer. Oh, and we do see Raven Strider on the so maybe, maybe, maybe he's goofing. I don't know. Still time to swap, so won't say anything about it just yet, but I think we might get to see the Moira count here. Uh, maybe for the additional DPS value? Multiple yeah, points? Moira, I mean, that's kind of the only thing she's really good at. In terms of healing, she's a pretty selfish healer, so it's pretty difficult to get value with her. But yeah, Spencer swapping to Tracer, that's no surprise. All right, with that said, uh, three point caps to win it. First point on its way. In the first 15, he's going to go match for match as well here. Off of the Soge into a Tracer of their own. So we'll see if they can uh, outmatch Spencer here in this 1v1. Well, and back to Akiriko as well. We saw Akiriko from Grimmy way back on uh, Night Market. We saw them pop out that Akiriko. So I'm looking forward to seeing if she can get a bit more value with a team that's traditionally faster paced, especially having that Tracer and that Genji. This is very reminiscent of Dive, or at least the Dive that we used to know, one that we're seeing a little bit less often. A wide swing in, a recall from Spencer, and Arcane finally going to be the one to go down. Maybe the Moira is out simply to stop Arcane, as he cannot deflect any of the damage she throws out, mm. unless he's deflecting that orb, which is a waste of deflect. Vexer goes down next in line. Raven Strider really appearing comfortable on this Moira. We saw a tech fade jump already and a triple kill. Five player kill streak off of Raven Strider on rip. So point cap one should be going in favor of Ball State. That it is. A lot of value in that extra damage. You gotta say a lot of value in it. Early damage gonna come through on this team as they try to push their way back in as well. We get no swaps here for Western Michigan who are, kind of, who are going to come straight back into the action. We'll spawn almost online for Jay Diesel and we'll almost get a adult from Moyer here as well. Coalescence could be online in just a little bit here. Looking for a spray out and Ghost goes for the slow field. Tycho goes in early, but Grimmie may go down early, barely. I mean, 20 HP or less mm. still. Can't make it out of the way. A pulse bomb whiff. No, not whiff. Yankster catches it with the skates. That's going to be a whiff. Nobody there to pick up Spencer. And it's going to be a Tracer 1v1. Coalescence off the while here. Arcane down. And the point flip for Western Michigan should not be a long-lived one. Oh, bit of stall coming out from JD. So we'll do what they can here. So low HP, about two. Does manage to find the health back. Going to jump back onto it now. Vex is taken out very early. <laughs> and that's the rest of the staggers away. It's going to be a bit of extra time now before this team actually recuperates to get back into the fight. Well, yeah, and the difference about Flashpoint versus Control is it's 0 0.7 seconds per uh, tick versus one whole second in Control. So they're actually capping this point a lot faster than we'd normally see, a 0.3 seconds faster per second. So we're looking at a lot of value early on. This will be the last fight guaranteed if uh, Ball State's able to win it. However, Western Michigan will have a chance at redemption with the following two points. Arcane already down. Tycho goes a little too deep Yo. in the back line. An incredible boop from Yakester forces them out of the fight. And now the point already getting ready to flip in favor of Ball State. Do they touch? They give up on it, and they try to gather the new location. Everybody's going to race to that next point as fast as they can and hope that their team can get there first. Now, uh, Ball State only two points away from being able to emerge victorious here on New Junk City. All right, staggered fight here, still on its way. Ball State in early. Shatter just going to the one. He does have the frag nonetheless. Tycho going to get one back with this Meteor Strike. So both tanks going to look to open this fight early. So in this back line, Spencer oh. up close, playing off and on the shield beautifully. Gonna try to 1v1 Arcane, realize that's not a fight they're winning, and it's a oh. fight none of their team is either. Western Michigan gonna take them down early. Great timing as well as so the point just about unlocked. 
Yeah, that, that fight ended almost perfectly in lieu with that point opening up. So now we're looking at Ball State, who's going to be trying to find that time to strike with two ultimates. That can be a little difficult to get value with. They committed that shatter, they commit the beat, and unfortunately the damage was just too high from Western Michigan, who's already nearly one-fifth done with this second flashpoint. Some great shuriken damage early from Arcane. Should open the door pretty effectively, and now Ball State looking for a strike shot of their own. Nobody falls through quite yet, though, and the blade in the pocket. No nano in, uh, in lieu, so we're going to be seeing this dry blade make an appearance. Look, Arcane knows this overclock's online. You oh. see the way he's looking for it. Fantastic timing. On the deflect, JD's looking to finish that frag as well. That's Western Michigan just nailing it on point two yeah. right now. Not giving any room to Ball State. Those first two entry frags should be enough to really solidify this fight early. Tiger going to grab another. Spencer trying to avoid the stagger, going to back away. Oh, big pin, a lot of damage, low <laughs> HP him? Tycho, nice. and does not get healed in time. He's going to go down. That's given Ball State at least hope to get back into this one, but they're still missing two members. Yeah, two members down here on the side of Western Michigan, but they're entering 90%, so Ball State really has to get up close and personal. They've got to get into this site. They've at least got to stall it through overtime, if not flip the point in their favor. I think all five members of Ball State have returned, and JD still goes down just in time for Tycho to get back, so that is a point flip in favor of Ball State. But now, Cat, they can't lose it for even a second, or this yep. is against them. They're going to try to get early space here on this side, making sure they can keep early control since we'll walk up and Western Michigan doesn't want to stagger. I like the call there. They back it up. They get everybody respawned and they'll come into this fight together. They know they just need to win this one, get point back in their favor, and it'll be 1-1. One, one. Could be 1-1 one, one any moment, but the beat is oh, not going to be dropped. I'm surprised. Jay Diesel goes for the pulse bomb. Maybe that's what they're waiting for, but now you've died with beat and nobody got to use it. So this yep. will be a point flip in favor of Western Michigan. They have a lot of ults, and for the first time uh, so far in my analysis, I wish they would have ulted. Yeah, that beat could have definitely saved the pulse bomb. Could have saved the could fight have there. Given him a chance. Yeah, and uh, not the case. So it'll be 1-1. One, one. Next flash put on its way. Uh, we got a pretty hefty fight right before the unlock. We'll see if we get that same story here uh, in this one. A fight that ended legitimately two seconds before the unlock. We wait to see if Ball State can find an opening because they've got so many ultimates to use. Pulse Bomb was a silent one, and now they want this junkyard. They want this workshop to end in their favor because if they lose this one, they're going to have to go back and workshop how exactly they can win this map. Yakester goes for a great boot. Coalescence able to keep them alive. Beat drop from both sides now. Everybody's going to be alive. So they can Tsune Rush and the Pulse Bomb. Null and Void, but it looks like uh, Overclock from Ghost is going to be silent as well. Not exactly the credit they needed, but if Tycho can go down, it'll all be worthwhile. Green is gone. Ghost is traded. Arcane has fallen, and it looks like Ball State should, I say should, be able to win this fight. Yeah, definitely should. Tycho does manage to escape here. Try to chase. Not going to happen. Saw that fade come through. I got nervous for a second with the increased movement speed, but will not catch him. He'll get away. Meteor Strike will be online. A Pulse Bomb for Jay Diesel. Had value just a fight ago. Last time we saw it pop. We'll see if we get that same story here. Jay Bob is going to have Shatter. And Spencer could have a pulse in time by the end of this fight. Western Michigan going to start to work in yet again. Oh, pulse bomb out from Jay Diesel and poor Ghost. I think that's the third time yep. that they have been pulse bombed. A huge shatter from Jababbers, but they're knocked off the high ground, and it is a lethal blow against them. Ball State are going to be losing this fight unless there is a miracle because they expended several ults, and unfortunately no value to be found. Nice. Yankster tries to run up high. Can't go high enough because what goes up always comes back down. This Ryan Hart, last player standing so close yet so far away from winning this third point of Flashpoint. It's yet again a late flip, though, from Western Michigan. It's one fight for Ball State to turn it back yet again. Last time we didn't see them hold strong. Could this time be different? Dry Blade almost up. Here go Rush for Grimmy as well. Almost going to be here. We got Coalescence online. Spencer close to this Pulse Bomb. Or the exact opposite way, but same difference. So those two will be up in this fight as well. Let's see where these ultimates are going to be falling. 
I'm looking at a blade again. It's got to be dry. You might as well rip it when you're able, but Arcane almost goes down to a beautifully tracked uh, clip there from Spencer. The HP stays up and out. Raven Shredder pulling Pulse Bomb. Here it is. From Cole Lessons. Arcane's blade goes in. Cole is pretty good at canceling it out, just like that. Arcane Vex are traded out for Jabobbers. The tank is missing. The Pulse Bomb should be pretty null and void, but with the help of some additional DPS, Spencer will pick Tycho up and out of the equation. Ball State flipping the point, and this should be theirs almost guaranteed, unless they walk into a Pulse Bomb, which luckily they barely did not. So unfortunate for Western Michigan, yet again, getting that last minute flip, just can't quite hold it. So last two fights, or last two points, excuse me, they've been able to win themselves a last second fight, but they could not win a second fight. So a little extra work. Can't quite dig the heels in just yet for Western Michigan. Aren't able to fold, pull themselves up. They got the arm holds, the footholds. So much more important when it comes to climbing. That's true. I mean, very well said. You've got to have those footholds and you've got to dig your feet in deep in scenarios like this. And I'm a little bit fearful that Ball State, Ball State might not be able to clutch that out. I'm looking at five seconds away from my least favorite point in this entire map. And it's a pretty claustrophobic one. You have to walk through very close quarters chokes to get to point, And then you get to point, which is, haha, a close quarter choke. So it's really difficult to get high value here on ranged characters like this Sojourner. Maybe like a Doomfist if he's trying to um, utilize high grounds for the seismic slam, so on and so forth. Incredible reaction time from Jabombers there to open up the door and force that Meteor Strike to get no value. The beat drop comes in late from Vexa. And I feel like it may be a little bit of a delay of the inevitable here as a lot of damage just being piled on by ball state. Raven Strider traded for Jay Diesel and losing that support can always be more valuable but when you lose three versus one all of a sudden Western Michigan has their back against the spawn do spawn room door. Tyco will walk into the spawn room. Jay Bobber's going to take him down and that's ball state. A confident fight win. I'd say the most confident we've seen in the early fight. It's been Western Michigan able to convert in the secondary fight. We know they have to do more than that, but uh, one step at a time. Just got to win this next fight first, and we can go from there. Zolt's online already. That's with another Pulse Bomb. Jabari's going to have a Shatter as well. Good timing on these ults. Could be all she wrote for Western Michigan. It could be all she wrote indeed. This team has to just win one more fight, Cat, and they have plenty of ultimates to make that happen. The Shatter is through. It is going to be able to find Creamy, who will be eliminated and obliterated. Kitsune going to be offline, but traded out for Yakester now, who didn't have a beat. Cole Essence wasn't able to keep that Lucio up and out of the combat. They're focusing Tycho, which I'm never particularly fond of, but when you've got that much damage, you can hit whoever you want, and they're probably going down just like mm. that. Ghost not missing a shot here. Double kill with Tycho into Vexa, and that should be the end of New Junk City. All State going to put themselves up. 2-0 in a burst of three series, unless that Genji works miracles and Arcane is going to be snuffed out by that anti-magic field. Ball State winning that third point and their second map, now one away from a victory here tonight. I get the plan of that attack there for Western Michigan, but I do think it truly cost them. They put two in the back line, so they were able to flip point. Yeah, but it left those front three in what is a three-on-five fight. They are not able to win it, obviously. And then, of course, if you can't win a three-on-five what are you going to do when that five comes and works their way back to the point? So, yeah, unfortunate. The stagger, I think, makes sense, especially as that percentage is higher. You mentioned the fact that the accrual rate is faster as well. You need yep. to flip the point. You certainly do. Or the fight win is useless if you're not there uh, to give back and stall for time. But I do think pushing those two players out of the fight does cost them. Yeah, I think it was, it's it's tough. It was almost its own version of the sunken cost fallacy of like, oh, I'm going to flank to cap point. And then someone was like, well, don't go alone. You're going to die. Let me go with right. you. And it's like, uh-oh, you've kind of switched now the can't win the first two. Fight. And yeah, now the, now the initial fight is being lost. So it, it's a tough scenario to be in. But I do think Western Michigan played that as well as they could have. There were no real grueling errors or mistakes yep. where I can sit down and go, oh, hey, this is why you lost. I think running against you without an Ana, I'm never particularly fond of. I think Nanoblade is as... uh recognizable as famous as it is for a reason it's an unbelievably uh incredible ultimate combination so bringing that Ana back to the table in lieu of Grimi on the Kiriko actually it's not Grimi's fault I think it's just mm. playing Kiriko is the issue I think she's pretty good but I think Ana is just working so much better the Bionade is sure. forcing Ball State to play slow and defensive the way they hate to play you can nano the Doomfist and the Genji both incredible nano targets so I think Grimi returning to the nano would be pretty beneficial for the team overall yeah I think too uh you also just run out options sometimes i mean the fact that if you don't want to play the on anymore you need your genji to be able to play something else uh and, and based on match that's history that's, that's not point. necessarily the case so it, um, you have yeah. to play nice <laughs> with your teammates right like yeah at some point you have to play nice with your teammates uh unfortunately the, the second option is a torb so you're definitely not going to see that in a flash point map it makes legitimately zero sense so what are you gonna do uh, listen listen 
Torbjorn is better than he used to be, but it has been a long time since I've seen someone play Torb and I've thought, good thing they're on Torb. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. Then don't you dare put a stationary turret down in the, yeah in a map where you literally have to move every uh, every all couple minutes <laughs> all the time like every two minutes you're moving your turret is not going to do much and torb is also tough because people are smart enough to shoot the turret and then it's like yeah what are you bringing to the table dude what's going on like what's the difference but we are going to be moving into push as our next map so and uh, speaking of map types torbjorn is terrible on um here we go uh so we're going to be going to coliseo esperanza or new queen street and all three of these are very similar coliseo is a bit more brawly so i think it's a little more likely mm -hmm. we're headed there you see characters like doomfist like reinhardt on um coliseo esperanza mm -hmm. is very open it's very sigma occasionally reinhardt friendly there's a lot of high ground so sigma does usually get that advantage and new queen street we're traditionally seeing characters like a Doomfist or like a Junker Queen. So maybe we are going to be seeing Western Michigan swap to New Queen Street because they know that they can get a lot of great value with Doomfist there. This is a great Coliseo value for Doomfist. Yeah. I think yeah. if yeah. I'm Western Michigan, that's where I want to go uh, if I know but the problem my is it also do. really enables Reinhardt, which is which is kind of the, the opposing side of it's that valid. coin. Yeah, that's very valid. Uh, I guess we'll see the choice end of making is I think... Uh, the most standard map, though, I see for push is Coliseo. So I feel like comfortability, uh, as well as their main tank, puts them there. But uh, I will see the case in the beginning. They get to, to, to pick as they please. Uh, but a map they need to win. Nonetheless, Ball State leading the series. I'll uh, see if they can close it here. Now, I'm not going to get my hopes up about anything yet. Yeah, swaps immediately off of Maga back onto Doomfist. But we are seeing a couple of swaps here and there. And actually, by a couple, I mean two. Uh, Arcane is temporarily hovering Sombra, which I think can work really well, taking down characters like Tracer and Moira. But if Arcane spends this entire game hacking the Reinhardt over and over, I'm going to show an unbridled rage that no one in this world has ever seen. Because I'm so sick of Sombra's running around hacking just the tank and getting no value for the team. But Arcane has not done that yet, so the slate is clean. Grimmy back on the Ana as well. I love it. Feels like that we're on the same wavelength. They want to bring that Nano back into the fray. But now it's funny because you've got a Nano. Now you don't have a Genji anymore. So it's like two steps forward, one step back. But you can still Nano Doomfist or Sojourn, who is an incredible Nano target. Looking at this opening fight, I think it's going to be battle of which tank goes down first. It does tend to swing that way, doesn't it? Especially on push maps. That's going to be a hack onto the Reinhardt, and J Diesel dies. So the Reinhardt hack is just really not worthwhile. They're hacked for like 1.5 seconds, I think. And Reinhardt, uh, joke's on you, he doesn't really use his util. He just swings that funny hammer. Um, <laughs> so three players have gone down. Let's turn it into nice. a beautiful 4K from Jabobbers, and Ball State win that first fight in true domination. Really poetic, isn't it? Fight opens Truly. with the Sombra hack, fight closes with the Sombra pin. It's, yeah. A bit of foreshadowing, it, 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 is it? It begins and ends with the same mistake. Sombra. A bit of foreshadowing could it be? I remember a time where the Sombra was uh, the menace for any tank. A recent time, even. S sitting in the front line where there's just absolutely nothing that you can do, but obviously not the case here early on. It's going to be... Should be close spawn picked up here from Ball State, unless there's contact here, which there is going to be on the back line. Let's we'll see how close they can actually get to this one. Uh, Spencer going to step in deep as well. Arcano's value early. They'll take down Ghost again. He's been going down at the start of a lot of these fights. Yeah, Ghost is really going to be struggling a bit, and I think that may be why the Sombra pick is making an appearance, because the Sojourn wants to play off into the distance, he wants to play kind of out of the way, and I think so, uh, Sombra flanking into the back line, hits the virus on you, does 200 damage in 10 seconds, and you're really not able to survive that engagement. Jabobbers is going to try to make it out. Should be able to grab the Mega. The Virus will be cleansed with that as well. And the tank lives just a little bit longer. My biggest fear, though, Kat, is what if this is just a giant stagger and the Reinhardt gets mm. eliminated anyway? They've stopped chasing, though, which is great. They did not get forward spawn, so everybody falls back a little bit. And now Ball State just waiting to regroup is five. Yeah, fortunately, the team got there quick enough that the chase doesn't really feel like something Western Michigan is going to have favor on to. It's high ground pickup for the team with the Rhine. Ghost going to have it this time around. Jay Diesel's number caught. Now he's dead. And holding close shield will back away. Now the Brig's gone. Vex is getting nailed by a much bigger shield. As J Bobbers comes down to the ground on this one. And off a of heightened into the robot is Ball State. Tycho staggered. And that's a robot back in their control. 
Robot back for Ball State here, and I like what we're seeing. A lot of teams, when they play this game, they get very nervous, they get very anxious about, you know, oh, we need to be going fast, we need to be going fast, etc., etc., but sometimes slowing it down, waiting for a full five, and just coordinating that target focus to find the appropriate first pick really can be the benefit that a team like this is looking for. Ball State should be able to get pretty close to forward spawn. I think they have to win one more fight before they can really earn it, but the value found is going to be in these ultimates from the side of Ball State. That's an incredible EMP. Wow. Raven Strider goes down. Tycho able to dive in. I think it was three players hit by it. Raven Strider, Jabobbers, and Ghost. Only one goes down, but Kiriko is such a fundamental player to take out of the equation, especially when she's so close to Kitsune. Arcane gets a really good hack, but Ghost does find a wonderful headshot. Oh my god, another wow. one! Ghost able to find two before they go down. JD Diesel one-ups him, though, with that 3k. And now Ball State, they lose that uh, card control, and I think they're going to lose the lead here as well. And nothing J Bauer was gonna, was gonna do, or excuse me, nothing else was gonna do to win that fight, but at least got some value out of it. Gonna be close spawn now on its way, but those players that went down by the hands of Ghost are going to have the long spawn by now. So they're walking all the way back, but it should be no worries. They should be able to hold Robot at the very least uh, in the middle of the map here, which is gonna be the call. So they, they've gone high ground early, looking for an early peak. They've got an overclock online. They've got the rush as well. Rally on its way now. Uh, and Grimmie gonna have this nano in addition. Oh, uh, Arcane back on the Genji here. That's not much of a surprise to me. We see the double support ultimate coming out. The Shatter from Jabagra is only able to be landed onto the Doomfist. A nano, I believe, to save that Doomfist's life is gonna make an appearance as well. And it looks like Tycho will find a first blood here onto Ghost. Raven, Strider, and Yakes are gone. And this will be a guaranteed uh, forward spawn for the side of Western Michigan, who are what looks like less than two meters away. Yeah, this one for sure getting picked up. There's no way there's protection here from the team coming all the way from spawn. You're still able to keep the overclock online throughout that fight, so it's still going to be pretty even ult economy. Tycho close to the strike as well. That could have some value. We saw they were able to single out Yakester a couple times on the flashpoint map. Raven does catch Jay early, so that's an overclock that's not into this fight. There's a lot of early damage here for Ball State. RK no choice but to back away to the high ground with the rest of the teammates. Vexa does pick one up off the bash. Spencer will fall. Trying to make something happen on that flank, couldn't do so. Now it's a fight in mid. Rush on its way, trying to focus onto this brig. Uh -oh. Still can't find her though. Yeah, Raven Strider tries to teleport out of the chaos and teleports right into a little bit more. Vexa will go down. Meteor Strike is through. Raven Strider will be taken down by Tycho in a huge hit off rip, but that damage reduction is lethal. Unfortunately, not lethal enough. Tycho is going to go down, traded out for Ghost, and Greeny going to follow. Jay Diesel, the hero, and oh, I hate this left shift, but I guess you got to do what you got to do. Lives to tell the tale, and Jabobber's just playing Reinhardt exactly like you'd expect a Reinhardt to play Reinhardt. Ball State going to have control yet again. Push past the middle. They've got another fight to win if they want to start accruing some more points and not able to get in just yet. So they'll back this one all the way up. Still losing a meters. It's roughly 10, more like eight. Still have control, but it's been the struggle to win this secondary fight. Yeah, for which is real. on its way now. Oh, Ghost will take Vexa out of the equation once more. And with another elimination here in favor of uh, Ball State. They should feel pretty confident about their chances to at least steal forward spawn. I'm not super positive on take the lead because the bot is going to stand there and scratch his butt for 10 minutes before he starts moving again. Post that first point cap. So that forward spawn cap, excuse me. This elimination stagger could be pretty huge. Yeah, Jay Diesel will go down. So that's an additional 10 seconds after losing forward spawn. So I'm actually a little more confident that Ball State will be able to take the lead. Yeah, just about there. Forward spawn captain. They'll move it forward. So they've done just that. They've gotten themselves the lead. See if they can win another fight to get an extra bit of advantage here. So we'll move into this open space. Slowly but surely trying to make the time work for them. But just long enough, that lead is going to be gained nearly 10 or nearly 20 meters online. Spencer already takes the Ana out. Nano is useless. Arcane might have to pull a dry blade here, but with three minutes left on the clock, you assume they're just going to wait till that next engagement, and nope, the assumption is wrong. It's why you never assume a blade finds one, but I think overall is going to be dominated pretty aggressively. Spencer in particular on this Tracer. You know, earlier today I talked about how Tracer is not really that good right now and how I'm so used to seeing Spencer on the May, but I mean, I've eaten my words through and through here. This has been a really impressive performance from Spencer so far. Yeah, most certainly lots of disruption when it comes to these early engagements. 3 going to sit online here. 
for Ball State. The same thing can be said about Western Michigan very shortly. Strike almost on its way. Rally about activated for Vexa as well. They haven't been keeping the Nano and the Blade on the same timing. We'll see if they do so yep. in the future. Last time it was a Nano to the Doom. We'll see the case ends up being for them. As they've almost got an overclock online as well for JD. Slowly but surely, it is go time, and all of a sudden, it looks like Yakester might have a little bit of space to create. A shatter is a silent one. I think JD's was picked up, but they died so quickly, I wasn't able to see. That's a huge stun into a Bionade, forces Jabobbers to really slow things down if they want to live, and he still might not be able to, no matter how badly he wants it. Brigitte goes into a critical condition, but you can't see Ghost Falls. It's a double kill in favor of a Ball State, and with only 105 seconds left on the clock, this is a huge fight win for this team, because they gain control of the bot, they keep it, and they should gain an additional meterage on the line here. Yeah, J Bowers does a good job of spacing onto that one. Also, pins the rally early, pushes her away, and helps for additional damage on the front line for the rest of his team. So, value from the Rhine, able to keep themselves alive. Got to give left to the steps on that one. As there's a lot of extra meters picked up here by Ball State. West Michigan going to need to win this fight confidently and then push this bot quite a ways if they want to have a shot at this one. Can't see Ghost Falls pretty early on. There's only one ultimate to work with on the side of Western Michigan, and they might not even need to use it yet, as it looks like this fight should all but be one. 5v3, the Lucio critical condition will not make it out, and Jabobber's just not going to live either, which I think is actually a good thing, because that is a pretty long delay when you have to walk all the way back around, compared with the team, yada yada. Now you all respawn at the same time. You're going to be able to recontest, most likely from that mega room that we're seeing Genji face right now. It's just out of view on the other side of this brick wall, but... The Soge being so loudly out in the open is going to be terrifying. And they actually got forward spawn, which I was not anticipating. Uh, you can't see Ghost is almost inevitably dead here if this goes south. Oh, all right. The contact is coming in waves. Oh, what Ball a beat. State beat early. Going to keep these teammates alive. And that's uh -huh. going to give them their first look in the door. Jadis is down. Vex is down as well. Spencer, two big pickups. You were giving love to the Tracer. It can keep that love coming. Tiger going to go to the top ropes here. Gonna kill some time. Ultimo almost online for Western Michigan, who are just gonna stagger this one out for now. Arcane and Tyco doing what they can to keep this one pushing. Played online for Arcane. Has some swipes, but no frags. That's just no tough. dice there for him. Everybody's down. And Ball State looking to close out this series. And Cal, let's just talk about it again, man. We run out of time. And for the first time, the Nano and the Blade were both ready. And they did not get to use it because unfortunately Greamy had gone down so early in that last fight that they weren't able to farm up just that last couple of percent to make the magic happen. Tycho, once again though, with play of the game, this Doomfist trying, but even with that big bionic arm, he is not able to deadlift this fight. It is still going to be a bit too heavy for that Doom. I like what we're seeing. I was critical of the Doom toward the beginning, but Western Michigan, they really did prove me wrong a bit. They played Doomfist all five times yep. on both attack and defense, both stages of uh, our control uh, our control map, Lijiang Tower, and on that push map so it looks good but unfortunately it's just going to be not good enough and western michigan is going to fall three to one here tonight yeah i gotta give love to ball state with the confidence on that high ground push you know just the fact they had that forward spawn and i think that actually catches western michigan off guard as well yeah. as soon as that charge comes through i mean they don't know what hit them they do react well uh, they get a lot of additional contact and then we see a fantastic beat drop to really solidify that fight when it gets that early damage and let that team just get in and put the work in Ball State. Uh, after what was a turn of, of point number one, they're able to win the first two fights on control. Things get turned around quickly at Western Michigan. We were able to inevitably pick up that first point. They recovered incredibly quickly, showed the flaws of the Doomfist when it came to their matchup on King's Row. And from there, never looked back. Yeah, just never able to really lose that momentum. And it's funny because way back on Li Zhang Tower, I talked about how they always started with momentum. They'd lose that first fight, or they'd lose that second fight, rather, and they'd never be able to reclaim it. But right. slowly but surely, Ball State did start to adapt. They started to change. We went off the Orisa on the Reinhardt, which I love seeing. I think a lot of the Rhine was looking good. The shatter timings need to be worked on a bit, but luckily enough, you've got, what, 10 weeks to work on it? Yeah. So you've got quite a while to improve on that. But folks, that's all we've got here for you tonight at Esports Collegiate. It's been a blast to be back. We're super excited to see you guys over the next nine weeks, and there's so much more Overwatch to come. So I hope you're not sick of it quite yet. We'll see you guys next week. Check your posture, drink some water. Don't forget to love each other. We'll catch you guys later.